Like I said earlier, a galvanometer or milliameter is a very sensitive instrument used to measure small amounts of current. Previously, I explained how to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter, and in this session, I'll dive into the nitty gritties of galvanometer conversion to voltmeter coming up. Welcome back. Now, a voltmeter, like you already know, is used to measure potential difference between any two points, such as these two points. If this is point A and that is point B, this voltmeter is meant to measure the potential difference across the points of this. As you can see, a voltmeter is always connected in parallel to the component whose potential difference is required. We don't want it to draw current from the circuit because if this is current coming in from here, when it reaches that junction, we can some of this current could go through here and some of it. Now, if the resistance of this voltmeter is quite low, it means that if some current is going through this voltmeter and some is going there, it means that the potential difference being measured across these ends will not be accurate. So what does that mean? It means that an ideal voltmeter should not draw any current from the circuit. All current that is supposed to come here is supposed to go through the component and none of it is supposed to go through the voltmeter. That's why we want this voltmeter to have a very high resistance. So it means that an ideal voltmeter should not draw any current from the circuit for accurate results. But practically speaking, that is not exactly possible. So what does that leave us with? It means that voltmeters are designed to have a very high resistance so that um, a very negligible amount of current may pass through it. Now, right now, we need to convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter. Remember, a galvanometer is a very sensitive instrument and it measures current going through it. So we need to connect a very high resistance resistor in series with a galvanometer and this special kind of resistor that is having a very high resistance that we connect in series with the galvanometer is what we are calling a multiplier. So when we connect this very high resistance multiplier to be in series with the galvanometer, then that is how we convert it into a voltmeter. Actually, many voltmeters contain a series of multipliers of different resistances. So we'll illustrate this further with a worked example. We're being told here that consider a galvanometer of 6 ohms and a full scale deflection of 10 milliamperes to be adopted to measure full scale deflection of 20 volts. What value of multiplication should be used? So if I may represent this diagrammatically, this is our current coming. Um, it is going to go through what we call the multiplier. Then it will go through our galvanometer. Let me represent my galvanometer like this. This is my galvanometer actually. Though, so this is my multiplier. And now we want that this system should be able to measure a maximum of 20 volts because here the question says that consider a galvanometer of 6 ohms so meaning this galvanometer has so the resistance of the galvanometer is 6 ohms and a full scale deflection of 10 milliamperes so meaning that the current that can go through this galvanometer is 10 milliamperes to be adopted to measure full scale deflection of 20 volts so it means that we want this galvanometer to be able to measure full a full scale deflection of 20 volts so it means that the potential difference across this point to that point the potential difference across this combination is ought to be 20 volts because we want this galvanometer to be able to measure 20 volts uh -huh. So what value of multiplication should be used? So what value of multiplication should we put here? What is the resistance of the multiplication we should put here so that we are able to, to, to get this thing to measure a potential difference of 20 volts? So here, what the, our approach will be that since the potential difference that we want across these two is 20 volts, it means that 20 volts, which is the total potential difference across these two is going to be equal to the PD across here plus the PD across here and then when we continue we will be able to get the resistance 
of the multiplier that we need. Now, the other thing that we need to know is that since this on full scale deflection, this this galvanometer can only accommodate or can only take in 10 milliampers. It means that that is the amount of current that will be even going through the multiplier. So the current coming in still is 10 milliampers. It's the same current going through the multiplier and it's the same current going through the galvanometer since galvanometer can only take in 10 milliampers so that's it so we know that the potential difference there the total pd that is required required to be measured is going to be the pd across let's call it v pd across the multiplier plus the potential difference across the galvanometer and we know that the total PD required is 20 volts. It's going to be equal to the potential difference across the multiplier, which is going to be given by the current going through the multiplier. Multiply that by the resistance of the multiplier plus the current going through the galvanometer times the resistance of the galvanometer. So that is going to give us the current going through the multiplier, we said. We said the current going through the multiplier is the same, it's 10 milliampers, so it's going to be 10 times 10 to the power negative 3. Multiply that by the resistance of the multiplier, Rm, plus the current going through the galvanometer, which is still that, 10 times 10 to the power negative 3. Multiply that by the resistance of the galvanometer, which is 6 times 6. So... We will go ahead. Uh, this is 20 volts. Now, when we make Rm the subject of the formula, we shall end up with an answer 1,994 ohms. So that will be the resistance of the multiplier connected in series with the galvanometer for it to be able to measure a full scale diff to, for it to be able to measure up to 20 volts. We could try out that number. A moving coil meter of resistance 900 ohms gives a full scale deflection of 25 milliamps flowing through the coil. Explain how it is capable of moving up to 5 amperes and uh, 100 volts. So if you're trying to find, to, to, to explain how it is capable of moving up to 5 amperes, it means you're trying to convert a moving coil meter or a galvanometer into an ammeter and for Roman 2, you're trying to convert a moving coil meter into a voltmeter. You could let me know the answers you're getting in the comments below.